God bless you and welcome to Bible study again. We have been focusing, focusing on a more excellent way. And our key verses come out of 1 Corinthians 13. Three things, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, right? Amen. We're talking about uh, and touching on love uh, in uh, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. As, but the main is coming out of chapter 13. Amen. And uh, I think that you and I are being challenged in this Bible study to let the love of God work in our hearts and our lives. Amen. So Lord be with us. Uh, help us in this time together. In Jesus name, help us to read your word and your word read us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, uh, we're going to uh, pick up here and it is chapter 13. Let's look at the, I believe verse 8 and let's go 8 to 10. How about that? Okay. Love never fails. But there are prophecies, they will cease, okay, after the church age is done. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled after the church age. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away after the church age. Now let me pause and address this because many people use this uh, today, churches, to speak against the gifts of the Holy Spirit working in the church. If you just stick with the text of Scripture, you can ask yourself this. Has love failed? No, love hasn't failed. God is still loving. God is still saving. Therefore, since love has not failed, the gifts have not failed. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Uh-huh. Okay. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Boy, they like to hammer on that, don't they? those that don't practice the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Okay. You have to take that in a context and together. Don't separate them. Ha Here's the question. Has knowledge ceased? No. No. Matter of fact, here, here's, here's scripture, Bible. Okay. In the last days, there'll be a boom of knowledge. Boom of knowledge. No one has a problem with that in scripture, right? On the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. So you can't have a problem with a boom of knowledge. Okay, that's true. It has happened and it is happening now. And you should not have a problem with the gifts of the Holy Spirit because the Bible speaks about, are you connecting the dots there? Since knowledge has not ceased and there's a boom of knowledge in the last days and God said I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days then these, there's a witness there to you from Scripture that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today when people, when the knowledge stops increasing, okay. But that's going to happen after uh, the church gets out of here, the rapture. Because when the church raptures out, then a great delusion comes. They're not going to have the knowledge of God. They're not going to have the knowledge of, of uh, His creative uh, powers. They're going to go into servitude under an antichrist system. Okay. Take a little time there to challenge you, those that, that go to churches that don't believe in the in speaking in tongues or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I would say, friend, they're probably not believing in love like they should, the more excellent way like they should either. Because you got to love God's Word. And God's Word says that prophecies, they will cease, tongues will be still, and there will be knowledge and it will pass away. But these things haven't happened yet. You know why? Here's the answer. Here's the answer. The church age is not over. It's not over. Once you've settled that in your heart, once you've got that understanding, you can go ahead and desire the greater gifts of God. And you can operate in a capacity that you previously have not operated in. Let's go for it. I just want to touch on that. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Paul is writing, we, the church, including himself, we, we, know in part knowledge still going on we prophesy in part gifts of the holy spirit in operation but when uh, completeness comes ah, but when completeness comes what is in part disappears mm. completeness has not come yet you haven't had your heavenly body yet <laughs> completeness hasn't happened yet therefore the gifts of the holy spirit are needed today and we boy we need them to operate in love don't we amen so now you get it okay once you stick with scripture you understand 
that much of what the church has taught, they're just missing out on the greatest gifts of love, of God's, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the church is not what it needs to be today because we have, and much of the church is neglecting Bible, Spirit, the Word. My people perish for what? A lack of knowledge. Knowledge. God help us. Amen. Let's go further with this uh, uh, study. Amen. We must uh, focus on that love is unfailing. Love will remain. We might uh, think it is bold for Scripture to declare that love never fails. But guess what? Love never fails. Yet we must remember that in, in saying this, Paul emphasizes the durability of love even over the gifts of the Spirit uh, that the Corinthians church found most impressive. There is a preeminence of love. Amen. Paul mentions first that prophecy will fail. This gift will cease to be needed. There is coming a day when believers will stand in the presence of God. At that time, listen to this, at that time prophecy, the gifts of tongues, and the gifts of knowledge, the gift of uh, the knowledge that comprehends the deep mysteries of God will no longer be needed. Why? Why? It's needed now. It's for the church age. It hasn't stopped. The demand, the need is it's still there. Okay. So why? Why will it stop? Because in God's presence, his glories will be continuously revealed to us throughout eternity. Amen. The gifts are for this time. The gifts are for the church age. The gifts, here's the good news. The gifts are for you and for your church if you operate in them. Friend, you got to uh, slow down and open yourself up to God. Pentecostal churches need to do this as, uh, as well. We need to let the Holy Spirit speak. When I say let the Holy Spirit speak, what we're understanding is this. Let God speak today. Scripture, canon of Scripture is closed. He's not going to do anything uh, that will contradict his Scripture, but he does have messages for us, amen, that are from him on a different level than the Scripture, okay? Um, the Scripture is settled in heaven, okay? Word of God. But there, there are messages to affirm and build up the body of Christ today. Praise God for that. Never contradicting the word, never contradicting the nature of God, amen, at all. Paul mentions uh, the prophecy, right? It will not pass away uh, until we get to heaven. Why? Because in God's presence, the glories will be there, and the teaching the understanding will be clearer on that part. In this present age, right now, there is only uh, partial knowledge. Thus, we're always gaining the knowledge. Okay, we get a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. Got it? Uh, it's all little bits, okay? Knowledge and the utterance of uh, prophecy is incomplete, but in the age to come uh, will be uh, different. Paul compares the present age to, uh, with the coming age, which will be manifest at the end of the church age. There it is. Amen. The phrase, when that which is perfect has come, that's the Bible, when that which is perfect has come, verse 10, refers to the coming of Jesus Christ. Coming of Jesus Christ, praise God. At that point, the gifts will be obsolete. That which is known in part will end, for it will have uh, have found its completion in Christ Jesus. It is wrong. Listen to me. It is wrong, and it's been a wrong teaching in the church that tongues and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today. God would not leave his bride, the church, helpless. He's given us power, given us strength, given us uh, a gift and gifts to work in, praise God, amen, and the Spirit distributes them, God distributes them. Don't you need it, friend? Don't you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Don't you want the power of God? Don't you want the love of God? There is a more excellent way, amen? There is more to your Christian walk than what you have experienced in times past. doesn't matter what your church teaches. It matters what the Bible teaches, amen? And since Jesus has not come, amen, Amen. Not yet, but he is coming. Praise God. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are for you. Why would you not receive salvation? Well, obviously I would receive salvation, Brother Mark. If you'll receive salvation, a gift from God, then why not receive the other gifts of God? 
Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, which there is no variation of turning. God does not change. It is for this time period. It is for the church age. Amen. And you need it. And I pray that you soften your heart. Get out the, the old uh, church teachings that are contrary to Scripture. And it's hard for people in times past. Man, I've got friends and family that have come out of churches that preached hard against uh, um, speaking in tongues and said it was the, of the devil and gibberish and a bunch of mumbling. And I've heard all kinds. You swing from the chandeliers. I've heard all kinds of ill speaking about it. But it hasn't changed the Word of God one bit. It doesn't matter what people say about the Word of God. The Word of God stands alone. Amen. It doesn't matter what people say about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't want you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, obviously. Right? That's no, no. That's big sin. Okay? Uh, don't do that. But many people have said many things against God, against His Word. Guess what? God's still God. He's still true. And His Word's still true. And His Word will stand when others fall. Praise God. Amen. Get on the winning side. Get on God's side. Praise God. In this present, present age, this is for today. Amen. So, uh, uh, that which is perfect will come. That's Jesus Christ. The phrase, when that which is perfect comes, Jesus Christ. At, at, the, at that point, the gifts will be obsolete, right? Amen. And Because we'll be fully founded in Jesus Christ. Now, let's transition here. In 1 Corinthians 13... 13, 11 through 13, okay? Uh, we find this. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away child my childhood behind me. By the way, uh, some people in the church need to grow up. Some people that you work with need to grow up. Some, people, some of your families need to grow up. Sometimes we need to grow up. Maybe you need to grow up. Amen? Let's put some childish things behind us. Amen? Now, for... Now we see only the reflection in its mirror. Then we will see face to face. It's heaven. Now I know in part. That's why we need the gifts, because we only know in part. Then I will know in full. That's when the gifts will cease. Even as I am fully known. Amen. Praise God. And now these remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Praise God. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13, Paul contrasts the present age with the age to come. Now versus then, earth versus heaven. Like the child who has not yet matured, so in the present age, us now, childlike, the gifts and the ministries Paul wrote about in 1 Corinthians are neglected, sorry, regulated, they are neglected, but we need to have more of them, regulated to this present age, so that in the sense they are incomplete, not proper, not perfect. Okay. We need to let God work in a more perfect way. God wants to work in the way of love. One of the ways he works in love is to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In verse 12, Paul used the illustration of a mirror. Corinth, uh, Corinth was known for making quality mirrors out of uh, bronze that was polished and made it to shine. Okay, Yet even the best mirrors reflected an obscure, distorted view. Okay, This is comparable to the knowledge of God in the present age. The word translated darkly means something obscure like a, like a riddle. Our current knowledge is partial and incomplete, but when Christ returns, we will see him face to face, and our knowledge will be complete at that time, and we will know the Lord fully even as he is, uh, knows us. Uh, we do not know what uh, from this knowledge we'll take, but uh, it is sure it will be glorious, glorious knowledge. Faith, hope, and love represent the essence of, of a Christian's life. In verse 13, uh, faith is one's complete trust in God. Hope is anchored in the certainty of the Christian's future with the coming of Christ. These are, are precious indeed and, indeed and are needed. Amen. However, the last of the three, love, is the greatest. For love unites us in Christ and love makes these all things, all, all these work. Love Love will exist throughout eternity because it represents the essence of the character of God. Okay, listen to this. Okay, get ready to, to finish this study uh, on love, a more excellent way. Our key verses, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, faith, hope, and love, grace, Jesus, love. Listen to this. It is easy to get swept up in the affairs of daily life. Is that true? Oh, boy, that's true. 
As each day ends, as we reflect on what we have done, we might be surprised to realize how little we were aware of God's presence and how little we recognized and practiced His love. God help us, right? Being aware of God's presence in our lives is a key to being a, a vibrant Christian and living a vibrant Christian life. Okay? The more we live each day aware of Him, the more our hearts will be filled with His love. Look for opportunities this week to establish God's love each day and every day. Amen. Paul emphasized the preeminence of, of the love of God to the body of Christ. Jesus, let, Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. Love ought to form our motivation for all the ministry that we do. Amen. Friend, I pray that the love of God is working in your heart and your life. I need it to be working in mine. Amen. The more the, the more the love of God works, the more faith will work, the more hope will work. Let me address this real quickly and we'll close. Much of Christian television is about faith. You have a lot of faith teachers. And many of them I do not agree with. Some of them I do agree with. Okay? But I think I can help us out, at least in this study, that why are there so many faith teachers? Faith, 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 faith. Have faith and faith. All these things you hear about. I want to show you real quickly how much they are unbalanced. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Faith, hope, love. The greatest of these in love. Okay? Love is third. Where's the message? Excuse me. Where's the messages of hope? In order for these to, to be balanced preachers, they can preach on faith. But where are their messages of hope? And then where are their messages of love? I point that out to show you that the inconsistency of many of the Christian televisions, uh, preachers on the television. If they're preaching 90% faith, they are missing the mark because it should be a third, a third, and a third, right? Probably not right. There needs to be actually more emphasis on love than faith, hope, because the greatest of these is love. I just it's maybe a little soapbox there, but I see some inconsistencies of a lot of the celebrated preachers that are out there. They're not uh, teaching on hope. Where's the books on hope? There's you go to the Christian bookstore. There's thousands of books, hundreds of books, several books on faith. Faith, 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 faith. faith. Faith to prosper, faith to get a miracle. Faith. What about your hope? Here's one thing that gets me. Uh, God will give you, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, to give you a hope and a future. It's Jeremiah, prophet, Bible. Okay? There's something about hope, and there's something about a future, and then there's something about God's love. See, God loves you, He really does. We're reaching out to you so you can reach up to Him. I pray that you're challenged through this. I pray that that you understand and you have a desire for greater love of God. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. God's given you love. He's given you Jesus. He's given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit distributes in 1 Corinthians 12 to the church. We have affirmed and know factually and biblically that uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the church age. Since we are in the church age and the rapture hasn't taken place, we need them today and you need them you may be going to a church that doesn't operate in them. That doesn't mean you can't operate in them. Amen. I had a, a Baptist friend of mine uh, that was in Tennessee uh, in the area that we were at. And he was a Baptist minister. He got filled with the Holy Spirit. He pastored his church for a long time. And then he went on to, to, to go to another church because they continually rejected that. Uh, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, another man from another background was a counselor. He got filled with the Holy Spirit in an elevator, and he's still Spirit-filled today. There are many people that have come from churches that have historically preached against these things, in error, by the way, but there are many people that have come out to know the fullness and the truth of the Word of God. I want you to know that fullness. Regardless of your church background, today's the day of salvation. Amen. You can, you can be saved. If you're an unsaved Christian, you're just a Christian in name only and not in heart and not in practice. You don't read your Bible. You don't pray. Uh, you only do church out of duty and not true love. Friend, you need to get saved. 
you need to get saved. Don't fool yourself. Uh, heaven is too precious. Eternity is too long. Amen. To miss the mark. Amen. To miss uh, the high calling of Christ Jesus. Friend, do you love God? Do you want to love him more? Or if you're an unsaved Christian, you need to come back to God. Amen. If you are a Christian, you need to be filled with God's love every day. Have faith. Have hope. Have love. Amen. But have the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is love. The Holy Spirit is love. Because the Holy Spirit's God. He will fill you. The gifts are for today. Let God use you. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift your hands and heart to the Lord. Right now, we rededicate your life, Lord, in Jesus' name. We come back to you, Lord God. We ask you, Lord, to save us, Lord. We are unsaved Christians, uh, some of us watching today. We're unsaved Christians, and we need your forgiveness. Forgive us for playing church and not having church. For, forgive us, Lord, for just using the, the word Christian, Lord, but not practicing our faith and not having a relationship with you. Forgive us. Uh, save us, Lord Jesus. Help us to make heaven our home. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Use us in the gifts in the church, in our personal lives. Let the gifts of the Holy Spirit move, Lord God. As we continue to be in this church age, I pray, Lord, you pour out your Spirit upon all flesh. Lord, until you come, help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name, I receive salvation. I receive those gifts. Praise God. Amen. We love you. We really do. Reaching out to you so you can reach up to him. His name is Jesus. Amen. I'm not ashamed of him, his cross, or his gospel. Amen. It's the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. We'll see you next time. God bless.